Hello there. How are you, everybody? How is everybody doing? I hope so everyone is doing great. As for me, thank God I'm doing great. I'm doing wonderful. Um, today I come to you with uh, uh, um, some issues concerning about Bible contradictions. Um, this one is from Mr. Jim, uh, his name is Jim. Um, he says there are 30 Bible verses that are contradicted themselves or contradicted each other. Uh, they are in the Bible and he has the verses and uh, um, he's uh, complaining about uh, the Bible inco inconsistency and uh, about contradiction and he uh, said that he was a Christian and then he left Christianity uh, because of this issue, the contradictions. Well, there are a whole lot of uh, Americans, Westerners, who left the Bible because they thought that the Bible was full of contradictions. And they couldn't understand, and they couldn't hold to the doctrine of the Bible, and they left the Bible, and the, uh, as a matter of fact, the religion, Christianity. Um, well, let me uh, um, let, let's consider what the, these verses are. Are they really contradictory? Are the, is the Bible really full of contradiction as these people claim, or are there something behind that? Now we have to investigate it. Uh, it can, I came across on the internet and I found it somewhere in the internet that the guy was complaining and then uh, saying 30 contradictions of the Bible. There are a whole lot of contradictions that the people say, claim, like there are 1,001 contradictions and the Muslims say this contradiction and that verse contradiction and this historical inaccuracy or inconsistency. Well, a whole lot of people say a whole lot of things. Now, is it really, is the Bible the Word of God or not? That's the main point which I won't make. Is the Bible the Word of God or not? If it is, there won't to be any contradiction. There won't to be, there will not be any inconsistency. We can't find anything inaccurate in the Bible if it is the Word of God. But, but if it is not, if it is the work of man, yes, of course, it will be full of contradictions. But I believe, I believe, I strongly believe the word of the Bible is the word of God and it is pure from any contradiction. There is no contradiction in the Bible. But the contradiction comes from the misunderstanding of people who claim to be a Bible reader and the professing Christians. Now, let me read, let me, let, let's go to his site and I'm gonna mention the website at the end of the, uh, this video or at this audio. Um, and uh, you can go and check it yourself. Now I'm gonna read whatever in the website and will come to a conclusion whether those verses are contradictory or not. Okay, uh, he starts in this way. A long, long time ago, I used to be a Christian, says Mr. Uh, Jim. Then again, I also used to believe in Santa Claus. Oh, <laughs> Ah, come on, that's the uh, starting. Now you can get, you uh, know, yeah, the red line. <laughs> he crossed the level, uh, red line. And then you know that this guy is not a Christian. The Bible says, you cannot have another God besides me. You cannot have Santa Claus as, you cannot believe in Santa Claus and you cannot believe in God. If you believe in God, you believe in God. Or if you believe in something else, you believe in that. But in, of course, in some, some religion, you may intermingle and mix and believe something else. But in Christianity, no. It is impossible. 
impossible. It's it's you know out of out of you know it is hundred percent inaccurate to say I believe in God, I believe in Santa Claus. No. So okay let me read. So that's his problem. Uh I I believe in Santa Claus. The thing that primarily killed my face is that I read enough of the Bible to realize that it, it, it teemed with contradictions and thus couldn't possibly have been divinely inspired, i.e. the infallible words of a perfect God that was dictated to uh, human transcribers. Well, that's a whole lot of things. Well, now, he has a faith. He, he claimed he has a Christian faith, pure faith. But something killed that faith. First of all, the faith was not a, 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 a genuine faith. It was not a genuine faith. He didn't believe in God. It, that was not pure, pure faith. That was, uh, uh, I can say, a, a, a sort of con con confusion. You believe in God, you believe in Santa Claus. And that was my strong faith. That's not a faith. So, whatever he has, what killed that was, the Bible was full of contradictions. That's what he's claiming. The Bible was full of contradictions. Okay, the contradictions kill. What are the contradictions? Um, let's go ahead. Here is a pair of verses that completely in, are uh, completely incomparable. These are two verses that are completely incomparable to each other. Okay, now he brought two verses, and now he brings two verses. Now let's see the verse and uh, investigate whether those verses are contradictory or not. <sighs> and whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemes against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. That he is a, a King James the uh, 1611 trans, tr uh, translation, the King James. So he is uh, uh, the Holy Ghost instead of the Holy Spirit. So now he's uh, now he, he brought this. Which verse is that? Let me let, let me continue. Luke 12:10, the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 12, verse 10. Now, what it says is that Jesus taught his disciples, Jesus says in the Bible that whosoever insults the Son of Man, Jesus, he will be forgiven his sin. But whosoever insults the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, his sins will never be forgiven. That is the, 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 the sin that cannot be forgiven. That's what Jesus is saying. Okay. Let's continue. Um, and whosoever, whos, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. Now, these are the two verses. Now, Luke 12, 10. Uh, Romans 10, uh, Romans Romans 10, 13. These are the two contradictions. One says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? And the other one says, Whosoever um, uh, insult the Son of Man, uh, Jesus, his sins shall be, will be forgiven. But whosoever insults the Holy Ghost, his sins will not be forgiven forever. That's an unforgivable sin. So now these are the contradictions. How these are contradictions? Let's let's read and then um he says I used to agonize over those two verses because if uh, if you commit a sin that can never be forgiven, you burn in the lake of fire forever. No turning back, do not go past. Do not collect two hundred dollars. I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> Do not <laughs> collect two hundred dollars. Well, what? So what would happen if, in the same sentences, I said, "Dear Lord, between you and me, 
the Holy Ghost is a kind of jerk off. Wow! A kind of jerk off. But I am calling on your name anyway. So, save me. Dude. Okay. These two verses <laughs> can't be sim simultaneously true. They cancel one another. They are contradictory. They are incomparable with each other. Is that really? Are they really contradictory? First of all, did, does this man know what he's talking about? Now he say, okay, I'll, the, because the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. Okay. And um, I say, oh Jesus, between me and you, uh, this Holy Spirit is a kind of jerk. Anyway, save me. So he's going to save me. He's not going to save you. No. You know what you're talking about, Mr. Jim? Do you know what you're talking about? Do you have any idea about those two, two verses? Or other Bible verses which are talking about the same issue? Do you have any idea? Okay, let's see. Now... How how is how is the kingdom of God work? I mean, do, do, how 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 will the kingdom of God, uh, you know, um, you know, um, carried out? I mean, done in, in this world. You know, when if a person is born of, and if he's a new creation. He's in Christ. If anybody is in, in Christ, is a new creation. If any person is in Christ, how come he's going to insult the Holy Spirit? If a person is holy, if a person is washed and cleansed from his filthy, dirty, rag sinner sins, and then cleaned up by the pl blood of Jesus Christ, how come he is going to insult the God of the, the, the God the, the person of God, the Holy Ghost. God is the whole the Holy Ghost is a God. Is a God. Is is in the Trinity. He is a commander in chief. He you know after Jesus Christ told the, 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 the disciples he told them to wait until the, the, the coming of the Holy Spirit. He promised to them. He promised that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and transform your life. And you're going to go to, uh, to the parts of the world from Galilee, from Judah, from Jerusalem, Judah, and Galilee into all parts of the world. And you will proclaim my um, kingdom. And that is a power. When you receive power, you got the power, and you are born of Christ, and the Spirit of God dwells in you, and helps you, assists you in your life, and you can insult that Spirit? How foolish! How foolish! How foolish a person you are, if you do that. You know what? People do not have any knowledge. They just say, okay, I believe I have the Bible, I read it. He has been reading, he say, I, have, I read too much of the Bible. I read too much of the Bible. It doesn't mean, why not you read it thousand times, hundred times, thousand times, ten thousand times. It's nothing. You have to have understanding, you have to learn. One has to learn from the Lord God. One has to open his spiritual eyes, I mean, pray before God that he opens his spiritual eyes. So, that's how the kingdom of God works. We are indwelled by the Spirit of God. The Spirit, you know, the fruits of the Spirit, the Bible says, the Spirit dwells in us and then help us be fruitful to, you know, to abide above the law, the law of the Lord God. That's the spirit. You can insult that spirit. 
You cannot insult. You cannot insult your brother. You cannot insult your sister. Let alone the God had the spirit of God. You can't. You can't. You are not allowed. No way, my friend. No way. No way. You cannot. People think that they, they are Christians and then they can do all kind of things. No. If you are a Christian, if you are a born again, you cannot insult your brother. Mm, no way. No. 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 You cannot insult your brother. Now, Matthew, uh, Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew 5, 22. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 22. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without her cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Waka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. He can, you call, you call your brother, you fool, you dumb, you, and then, you, you claim you're gonna, because I call, I, 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 I can call upon the name of the Lord and can be saved? <laughs> Don't be fooled, my friend. You can't do that. When you are a Christian, let alone God, the Supreme God, the Holy Ghost, you cannot insult any other human being. It's Jericho. That's not a contradiction. It, it is not at all, there is no contradiction. No contradiction. The contradiction is in your mind. Because you don't believe in the word of God. And you are not. You are a reprobate. A professing Christian. If you are a professing Christian, of course. That's possible. Now, let's, let's talk about the spirit. The spirit of God. Now, did, did, did Mr. James uh, read this one? Uh, Acts 13, the book of Acts 13, verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. You know, this is a spirit. Are you going to insult this spirit? Have you read this one? You say, I kept on reading, reading the Bible. What? What does it mean reading? It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. You have to know what you're reading, my friend. It says, he's the one, the commander, who sends out the, 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 the people of God to minister God. There was a time of Christ when he was on the earth, he worked here, and then then comes the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Do you know this ministry? It is the Bible which, which says that. And then you say, okay, this is, this is the, the Spirit of God, the one who is supposed to send you out, for, prepare you for a ministry, for effectiveness, to, to live a holy life. Holy life. That's enable you to live a holy life. Have you read the gospel? That have you read um, um, Galatians? Galatians five. Galatians five. Have you read it? Have you gone through it? Another part of the Bible. Let me go to. Let me go and read it for you. If you don't read it, I'm sure you didn't. Uh, Galatians 5.16 this, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes, you have to be filled with the Spirit of God. That's what enables you to do your job. The one which empowers you to do your job. The one who helps you to live a holy life is the Holy Spirit of God. Are you going to insult Him? 
and then you get, can be saved? First of all, one has to be holy to be saved. One has to be cleansed from all his unrighteousness. One has to be washed out in, in, in the, by the blood of Christ and the, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, he says, okay. Now, um, that, thus I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the, the lusts of the flesh. Now, the flesh is, everything is mentioned in that. But, in 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, ag against such there is no law. Now, this is, this is a word of God. So, the Spirit indwells in you and then make you fruitful, fruitful, cleanse you so that you can be um, a good person. And then you're going to insult this spirit and then you, ca you claim you can call the name of the Lord and can be saved. You have to know, okay? You, you, better, you, better, know, you better learn a whole lot of things. Okay, now, um, Acts um, 13, 4. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Cilicia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Now, what? Who's, the, who's sending them? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. Oh, this Bible is contradictory. I don't believe in it. It's full of contradiction. The contradiction is in your sinful mind, my friend. It's not in the Bible. There is no any contradiction. But that is in your head. Okay, let me give you another. Ephesians, Ephesians 4.30. 4.30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do you read this one? My problem is I keep off reading, <laughs> says Mr. <laughs> Jim. I keep off reading and reading and reading and reading and I have a whole lot of contradiction. You try to find out a contradiction and be, but you are not ready to learn from the way of God, uh, from the Bible of God, the Word of God, but you are looking for contradictions. That is the whole lot of... That's the problem of most Americans, most Westerners. They don't know the Word of God. But you better learn from the Word, from the word of the Lord. The Lord is ready to teach you. But if you stand against Him, you throw yourself into the lake of fire. And you cannot escape it. You call two hundred dollar, nine hundred dollar, whatever. Your dollar will never save you. Your knowledge will never save you. Your America, your your country will never save save you. Your president will never save you. He cannot save himself from the hand of the angry God, the God of Israel. Yes, the true God. And you can you say oh, those verses contradict? They don't contradict. They never contradict. The contradiction is there on the head. Okay, now I'll continue this program. Mm, I have so many uh, Bible contradictions. People claim they are contradictory, but in reality they are not. What I find out, and I call this uh, program... Um, Answering the wise man, Mr. Wise Man, because there are so many wise men over there. So-called wise men, quote unquote, <laughs> quote unquote, wise men. Answering wise men. I'll answer. I'll prepare Bible uh, lessons, Bible study, and then explain what the, this contradiction. They say the contradiction, and then find out that they are not, show them that they are not contradictory. If you want, you can talk to me. You can talk. 
I can show you so many of the, 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 the claims which you, you guys say contradictory are not really contradictory. No, there is no contradiction in the Word of God. No, they are pure. They are pure. But the Bible says there is a generation who are wiser, wise, wise generation. And nowadays our land is full of this wild, so-called wider generation generation inflated with self-righteousness and with knowledge while that knowledge cannot save them thank you very much for listening this uh, program and until then may God richly bless you um, have a nice time until then